from Wikipedia, Brachistochrone curve. In physics and mathematics, a Brachistochrone curve from ancient Greek, shortest time or curve of fastest descent is the one lying on the plane between point A and a lower point B, where B is not directly below A, on which a bead slides frictionlessly under the influence of a uniform gravitational field to a given end point in the shortest time. This problem was posed Johann Bernoulli in 1696. Please watch this graph. In this animation, this bead reaches point B fastest. The curve of fastest descent is not a straight or polygonal line. This is straight. This is polygonal line but a cycloid. This is cycloid. The brachistochrone curve is the same shape as the totochrone curve. Both are cycloids. However, the portion of the cycloid used for each of the two varies. More specifically, the brachistochrone can use up to a complete rotation of the cycloid at the limit when A and B are at the same level, but always starts at a cusp. In contrast, the totochrone problem can use only up to first half rotation and always ends at the horizontal. The problem can be solved using tools from the calculus of variation and optimal control. Calculus of variations The calculus of variations or variational calculus is a field of mathematical analysis that uses variation which are small changes in function and functionals to find maxima and minima of functionals. We will learn calculus of variations. To learn calculus of variations, we need some text. Some textbooks from Amazon. I would highly recommend you Shom's Outline of Advanced Calculus, this book. This book is very good because it has rich solved problems. We will also use Advanced Calculus for Application by Francis Hildebrand. You can purchase used paperback. We will also use Differential and Integral Calculus, Volume 1, Richard Gurang. There is Volume 2, Differential and Integral Calculus, Volume 2, Richard Kurang. Also, we will use Calculus of Variation by I. M. Gelpand or S. B. Pomin. We will also use this book, Calculus of Variation. We will also use Calculus of Variation with application to physics and engineering by Robert Feinstock. This book is also very good. I would recommend this book, also this book, also this book, also this book, also this book. Also this book. Now back to Brachistochrone curve. I would read a little bit more. 
if you scroll down, there is a very interesting history. Johann Bernoulli posed the problem of the brachistochrone to the readers of Acta Eruditorum in June 1696. He said, I, Johann Bernoulli, address the most brilliant mathematicians in the world. Nothing is more attractive to the intelligent people than an earnest, challenging problem whose possible solution will bestow fame and remain as a lasting monument. Following the example set by Pascal, Verma, etc., I hope to gain the gratitude of the whole scientific community by placing before the finest mathematicians of our time a problem which will test their method and the strength of their intellect. If someone communicates to me the solution of the proposed problem, I shall publicly declare him worthy of praise. I shall publicly declare him worthy of praise. Bernoulli wrote the problem statement as given two points A and B in a vertical plane. What is the curve traced out by a point acted on only by gravity, which starts at A and reaches B in the shortest time? Johann and his brother Jacob Bernoulli derived the same solution, but Johann's derivation was incorrect. So, Johann Bernoulli's derivation was incorrect, and he tried to pass off Jacob's solution as his own. Oh my god. Johann publishes the solution in the journal May of the following year. So, probably in 1696 or 1697, and uh, noted that the solution is the same curve as Huygens' Totochron curve. After deriving the differential equation for the curve by the method given below, he went on to show that it does yield a cycloid. However, his proof is marred by his use of a single constant instead of three constant, V, 2G, D, below. Bernoulli allowed six months for the solution, but none were received during this period. At the request of Leibniz, the time was publicly extended for a year and a half. 4 p.m. on 29 January 1697. At 4 p.m. on 29 January 1697, when he arrived home from Royal Mint, Isaac Newton found the challenge in a letter from Johann Bernoulli. John stayed up all night to solve it and mailed the solution anonymously by the next post. Upon reading the solution, Bernoulli immediately recognized its author, exclaiming that he recognizes a lion from his claw mark. This story gave some idea of Newton's power, since Joan Bernoulli took two weeks to solve it. Newton also wrote, I do not love to be Stunned, pestered, and teased by foreigners <laughs> about the mathematical things. <laughs> and Newton had already solved Newton's minimal resistance problem, which is considered the first of the kind in the calculus of variation. <laughs> so, we will learn calculus of variation.
in the near future. Newton also wrote, I do not love to be done, pestered, and teased by foreigners about mathematical things. Oh, it's so interesting, isn't it? I do not love to be pestered and teased by foreigners about mathematical things. When you read text, you have to read your text very carefully. Newton stayed up all night to solve it and mailed the solution anonymously by the next post. Why? He posted the solution anonymously. Why? Why anonymously? Because Newton wrote I do not love to be pestered and teased by foreigners about mathematical things. He doesn't like to be pestered and teased by foreigners about mathematical things. So he mailed the solution anonymously. When we read the text, we have to think carefully every each word. From Thomas's Calculus. 14th edition, chapter 11.1, Parameterization of Playing Card. We will learn polar coordinates very soon. Parameterization of Playing Card. From this chapter, if you scroll down, you can find cycloid. This problem. In our previous episode, we derived parametric equations for this cycloid. In my next episode, we will set up equations to solve the time taken when we release a bead from point O, the time taken the bead to slide down this curve, cycloid curve, to reach point B. We will set up the equation to compute the time taken for the bead to slide down this cycloid. We will learn brachistochron and totochron. We will set up these equations. Then, if we scroll down further, we will learn how to differentiate parametric equations. Then, we will learn how to compute lengths of parametrically defined curve. Then we will finally compute the time taken the bead to reach point B. So example 8, we compute the time taken by the bead to slide down the cycloid like this. This is the amount of time it takes the frictionless bead to slide down the cycloid to B after it is released from rest at O. Figure 11, 13. Figure 11, 13. For next few episodes, we will compute the time taken by a bead to slide down this cycloid when released from point O to reach point B. That is, we will learn brachistochrons and totochrons. We will also learn about calculus of variation in future sessions. In near future sessions, we will learn state-of-the-art C++ programming. We will start with a coroutine, I will completely cover coroutine. Then, I will cover C++ ranges. Please understand that range library is not yet complete in case of Clang compiler. In Clang compiler, C++ range library will be fully implemented with version 15. As of today, Clang compiler version is 14. It does not yet support C++ 
range library completely. I will also cover C++ modules completely. Basically, I will film videos about state-of-the-art C++ programming when new features are implemented. Also, in near future, I will cover OpenGL programming version 4.5 or 4.6. I will also cover CUDA programming. I will use this book, but I will pay more attention to CUDA C++. I will also use CUDA for engineers, this book. I will also cover this book, CUDA by example. In case of CUDA, I already covered in my Korean channel, but I will discuss integration between CUDA and OpenGL. We will be using Microsoft MFC to implement CUDA application and OpenGL. Basically, we use MFC framework to implement OpenGL as well as CUDA. I will not use Qt Toolkit. Once again, I will not use Qt or Qt Toolkit. Instead, I will use MFC Microsoft Framework, also .NET Framework. The reason I don't use Qt is that Qt is more high level and it's very difficult to program lower level interface. Microsoft Toolkit MFC is much easier to do lower level programming. That's why I prefer MFC. Of course, MFC is more advanced or more complicated than Qt, but MFC is from Microsoft, better integrates with the Windows operating system. For CPU side parallelism, more specifically task parallelism, I would use Intel TBB. Intel TBB is supported on wide range of platforms. For CPU side parallelism, I will use Intel TBB. On GPU side parallelism, I would use CUDA. The reason I gave up SQL is that SQL does not support recursive function call for GPU kernels, whereas CUDA support recursive function call for CUDA kernel. That's why I prefer CUDA over SQL. I would cover undergraduate level or college level calculus, mainly using Thomas's Calculus 14th edition. But I will use James Stewart Calculus as well. I will also cover physics, fundamentals of physics. Holiday, Lesnick, 10th edition. Also, physics for scientists and engineer with modern physics. I will also cover engineering mathematics using Dennis G. Zill, 7th edition. I also use Erwin Crazy, engineering mathematics, 10th edition. I will use this book frequently. I also use Advanced Engineering by Peter V. O'Neill, 6th edition. I will use Advanced Calculus for Application, 2nd edition by Francis Hildebrandt. This text is quite advanced. I will use Advanced Calculus from Shom Outline series. This book is very good because it is rich of solved problems. I would also use Calculus of Variation by Gelpand and Pomin. I will also use Differential and Integral Calculus by Kurang. This is Volume 1, but there is Volume 2.
I would use mathematical method for physics and engineering, third edition. We will solve many problems from this book. I will cover electromagnetism, classical mechanics, fluid dynamics, thermal mechanics, statics and mechanical dynamics, and more. These are my long-term goals. I won't allow any people, any audience to try to influence or affect the course of my learning or filming videos. Don't ever suggest me QT toolkit, for example. I can create perfect application using MFC framework and .NET framework. This is my own creation. Johann Bernoulli, Jacob Bernoulli, Isaac Newton, Brachista Crone Curve. I can create perfect application using Microsoft Framework. I don't need your input about the tools. Why should I ever bother with the Qt Toolkit if I can create perfect application using MFC and .NET Framework? Don't ever try to influence over the course of my learning. I also changed my mind. I will allow only those people who have identified himself or herself to use my video and the source code. That means I will create membership. Only those people who has membership can watch my future videos. I won't share my source code with you. Jane Doe or John Doe, I don't like anonymous people. Without membership, you may not able to use my future videos. I originally planned the membership fee to be zero dollar, but YouTube does not allow free membership. So the minimum membership fee is 999 US cents or one dollar. The membership fee is one US dollar. This is to identify who are using my source code or watching my videos. I don't create videos for commercial reason, but I don't want to share my source code with anonymous people. Without membership, you may not be able to use or watch my future videos.